What up, Freedom fans? Jonathan the Eric here with you today, and we want to go over loading and unloading and the safe handling of spear guns. There we go. We've got two FII replica spear guns here. So these, you will see us actually loading these guns in this video, but don't think that's okay to load your gun out of the water. These guns are specifically built to load in and out of the water. Mm -hmm. um, they are disabled by Rife. So they cannot shoot. They're actually bolted together. The shaft is bolted in place and welded in. Um, so that's first safety tip. Absolutely. Don't load your spear gun out of the water. As Eric mentioned, the uh, the shaft in this spear gun is actually bolted to the gun itself, right? So when you guys see us handling these guys and loading and unloading, showing you different techniques, just keep in mind that this is by far the only gun that you ever want to load out of the water, and it's really just for the technique's sake, uh, as well as it's actually welded to the mechanism back here. So no matter how many times we pull the trigger, there's no way this shaft can go anywhere. So just making sure that everybody's understanding that and how that works. Um, so we actually use these uh, guns in our spearfishing course. After you've completed your FI level one freedivers course, we can, uh, you can jump into the spearfishing course and we'll put a link for both of those courses in our description below. But um, the idea and the reason why they use these replica guns during the spearfishing course is so that you can understand how to load and unload your spear gun, and then also the, the safe handling, right? So knowing where to point it, how to hand your gun back and forth to people, and like there's a lot of stuff that goes on to this kind of sharp, pointy, deadly object. Yeah, the, I see a few things happen in the water with spear guns that really makes me cringe. Um, and not just beginner spear fishermen mm. slash okay. women. Yeah. Um, People of all ranks make me cringe. <laughs> like it's, what? What's some of the craziest stuff you've seen? Or the most common? Let's go for that. So the two most co so the most common thing that I see for people that are inexperienced is when you're in the water and you're sitting there and you're breathing up. Usually your gun's pointed down, okay. which is ideal. You want to make sure, obviously, if other people are diving, you're not pointing it straight at them. Okay, it's a common overlooked thing. Don't point at your buddy. Got it. Yep. But what I see is when people go to make their dive. They do their duck dive, and they whip and nae the gun to the back. <laughs> so as they're diving, and they're not thinking about it, it's just as they pass the gun in their duck dive, So now the gun rotates behind them, and now I've got a dead Jonathan. Oh, uh, no. Nobody <laughs> wants a dead Jonathan. Shoot um. the biggest fish of your life. <laughs> so that's one thing. Gotcha. Um, the other thing is what I see in experienced divers, which drives me crazy. They do their dive, everything's fine. They're either diving with the gun out in front of them, like that, or they're doing a nice soldier carry, diving down that way, right? Um, but what happens is, what happened? When they come up, they're swimming up to the surface, holding the gun like this. And they get to the surface and their buddy is right next to them. But what happens when your buddy is in arm's reach? Oh! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, guns pointed straight at the surface where everybody else is floating on the surface. That to me is like, okay. what are you doing? <laughs> with your life and mine. <laughs> and so that's something that we go over in the spearfishing course is the acknowledgement or the realization of where your tip of your spear gun is pointed at all times, right? M muzzle awareness. Muzzle awareness and muzzle control. Always being <clears throat> conscious of where that guy is going. You never want to take your gun and sweep your buddy, right? Like at all times, even if it's unloaded, right? It's good habit to make sure that my tip never crosses my dive buddy, right? So when I'm passing a gun back and forth, right? I don't wanna hand it to you like this. That's bad, right? I, I want feel to... uncomfortable even with this gun. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna make sure that I hand it butt first. Now, another thing that's kind of funny to note is I don't wanna hand it like this, right? Because now I can stab myself. That's no good. So when I hand the gun, I want to hand it to my left or to my right and hand it to my dive buddy. 
And then you want to grab it just like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you pull the trigger when you're grabbing the gun. <laughs> Don't do that either, right? Um, so making sure that you grab either the actual handle or the entire stock, right? Yeah, I think it's safest um, to go for the Grab the stock. stock, yeah. So that's something that, uh, that we really like to do. Um, and, and like I said, there's way more of this um, that we cover in the actual spearfishing course. So what I want to do next, is I want to show you guys kind of actually the two different techniques to loading a spear gun. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw on some, uh, some ballast gloves as well, which you guys will have a link in the description below. Um, but when you're loading your spear gun, you want to make sure that you have gloves on, right? Uh, super important. I've uh, unfortunately had some guys who have broken fingers and torn off nails because they were not doing it properly and they didn't have the proper equipment on, right? So making sure that you've got the proper equipment. So first and foremost, I've got to make sure that my shaft is engaged into my uh, sear and my actual mechanism. Obviously we can't do that with this one because it is permanently fixed to the gun, but normally I would make sure that I check my shaft, make sure that when I load my first band, it doesn't just take off, right? Then I'm gonna look at my safety if the gun has one. I wanna make sure that it's on safe, right? For this particular gun, forward would be fire. Obviously it doesn't do anything because it's disabled, but just as good habit, I wanna make sure I put it on safe. The next thing I'm gonna do is if I have a short gun where I can just reach the bands, then I'm gonna do so. If I've got a really long gun to where I can't reach the bands, I'm gonna grab the handle, not putting my finger in the trigger guard, right? And then I'm gonna reach up with my other hand and grab the back band, right? So the band that's closest to me. And with a chest load, I'm gonna load with my palm, this part of my hand facing down. So I'm gonna grab the rubber of the spear gun band, put that into my chest, right? If it's a long gun, I'm gonna swing it into my chest. And I like to put it just below my sternum, right? So kind of like, on my abs, a little bit above my abs. In the I've, meat. In the meat of my chest. Um, I've got my hand on the rubber itself, not on the wishbone, right? I'm not grabbing the wishbone, I'm actually grabbing the rubber. And then I'm gonna pull that guy here so that I can reach the other band. When I have that guy, pull that back and then load that on the first tab. So the band closest to me goes to the tab furthest away from me, right? If you load this, guy to here, it's not going to allow you to load your second band on there very easily, right? So now that I got my first band on there, you can do the same thing. If the gun is short enough, I can leave it in my chest and reach the band, or as most guns are going to be, I'm going to have to grab the handle, grab the rubber band, push this guy into my chest. Same thing, palms facing down, grab the band, pull this guy back, and hook it onto that tab making sure my fingers are out of the way. And now this guy is locked and loaded, ready to fire, right? Making sure that I keep that guy on safe until I'm actually ready to pull the trigger and shoot something. The other way that we can load our spear guns if we have a little bit of a longer butt stock, we can actually hip load our spear gun. So let's say that you uh, didn't want to load it on your chest or it's too painful. So what you can do is slide this guy down to our hip, kind of like that little cavity right there where you put like a fishing rod. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the same band that you grabbed when you chest loaded, the one closest to you, but instead of your palm being down, you're now gonna put your palm up. So your thumbs pointed to the muzzle of the spear gun, and you're gonna grab the bands just like this, palms up, and now what you're gonna do is you're kinda gonna hunch over using your biceps, and you're gonna pull this guy down and lock it into place. Same thing, reach up, grab the bands, palms facing up, thumbs facing forward, grab the bands, not the wishbone, and then you're gonna kinda hunch over as you pull this guy down and load the spear gun itself, right? So two easy ways to load your spear gun. I found for me personally, I like the chest loading better, but it just depends on what kind of gun you have and um, what style you're used to. All right guys, thanks for checking out this video on how to load your spear gun. Hopefully you learned something good from this. And I wanna know down in the comments, what's the biggest spear gun you've ever loaded and what's the biggest fish you shot after loading it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, so again, as we talked about some of those safety tips, uh, the best thing that you guys can do is jump into that spear fishing course that we have a link in the description below. And uh, that will go in a crazy amount of detail 
showing you how to load, how to handle, all the safety tips that we teach you in the class. Be safe out there. <laughs> Make sure that you uh, are watching where your muzzle goes. Muzzle awareness is the biggest one, I think, to take away from that. For sure. We'll see you in the next one. Next time. and educating you guys more on the products that we use. Uh, if you have more questions or comments of things that you wanna learn more about and videos that you wanna see, then uh, leave a comment in our discussion board on our channel. But for the next time in between there, check out these videos right here and we'll see you guys in the next video.